Hello, welcome back to a new Elden Ring build video. Today I'll be showing you my bleeding build and how to cause insane blood loss build up. The bleed mechanic in Elden Ring has to be one of the most powerful ways of fighting enemies and using the right combination of character points, talismans and ashes, we can maximize this bleed mechanic. Okay, so first of all, my weapon of choice has to be dual wielding the Banished Knight's Greatsword. And I noticed a lot of people using katanas, dual wielding katanas for bleed builds, but I found that with the same setup, my greatswords do more damage and they stagger the enemy and they have higher amount of blood loss build up. And I really wanted to do the katana way of playing as well because katanas just look kind of cool, but I just found the greatswords to be more effective. I guess you could say the katanas are faster, but I don't really mind sacrificing a bit of speed for extra damage. So as you can see, I have a level 25 Banished Knight's Blood Great Sword with a blood loss build up of 141, which is pretty insane. And I have a second Banished Knight's Blood Great Sword only at level 18 because I haven't found enough smithing stones to upgrade it yet. But it still has a respectable blood loss build up of 126. And what this means with these weapons is that you can trigger a bleed effect straight from the very first strike. Usually when you're using a weapon that has some kind of bleed effect it will take quite a few hits until the bleed meter fills up and you get that splash of red and that bonus extra damage. And the higher the blood loss build up number is the faster you get to trigger that blood effect. But since we have such a high number for blood loss build up we actually just trigger the blood effects straight away from the first hit. And the way we get to 141 blood loss build up is basically by getting a lot of arcane points. So I've put 80 points into arcane. I found that any more points into arcane doesn't really make any difference. So have arcane at 80 max. I don't know why having loads of arcane seems to boost your blood loss build up by a lot, but it does. When I had 10 arcane, my blood loss build up was only about 108 and it went up to 140 when I started putting more points into arcane. So it's pretty good. As for the rest of the points, it's up to you where you put them. You can put them into Vigor for extra health or maybe Strength or Dexterity. I actually forgot to put any points into Endurance, so don't do that. And I think the reason why Arcane affects it so much is because we're going to use an Ashes of War called Seppuku. So this Ash is really good for bleeding builds because it improves your ability to inflict blood loss. And you can find it by going to this frozen lake and you've got to look for an invisible Scarab Beetle that drops it and you'll find that the scarab beetle patrols this area around these trees. You'll be able to see these little footprints going round and round. Just stand by the tree, wait for it to come round and charge up some kind of heavy attack with a pole arm or do some kind of AoE attack and you'll eventually get it and that's how you get the Ash of War. It's in the very top part of the map, the snowy bit. You can apply the buff to both weapons when you're dual wielding. You do this by holding Y then pressing L trigger to equip your left hand and then pressing L to apply the ash and then holding Y pressing R trigger to re-equip your right hand and then press L again to apply the buff. Now you really need this ash or maybe some kind of other blood ash to allow your weapon to cause bleeding and blood loss build up. There's a few other blood ashes, one's called bloody slash and there's another one called blood tax, but this one's the best one I think. And the best thing about the blood ashes is the fact that you can make almost any weapon into a weapon that causes blood loss. So you don't have to apply this to a great sword, you could apply it to a whole range of weapons. I think it's mostly swords. It doesn't seem to work on weapons like axes or maces. And what makes this even more deadly is when you get the Mimic Ashes, and your Mimic Ashes also have the blood loss build up on his weapons. So now you've got the two of you slashing away, triggering all of these blood loss attacks, and you just shred through bosses and enemies. The damage output is just insane, and some bosses, well most bosses, you can keep staggering them with the dual wield greatswords. Now the most effective playstyle I found with the greatswords was to do a jumping attack and bring both swords down at the same time and they both trigger the blood effect. Now as for talismans, the only talisman that I found so far that has any kind of effect on bleeding is the Lord of Blood Exaltation Talisman. So if there's any kind of bleeding going on nearby, you'll get a boost in attack power, which is really helpful. So it's a bit of a pain trying to get to this place. There's a dungeon in Lanedale Capital. It's underground in the sewers. It's called Lanedale Catacombs. You've got to find this well, jump down it, and then you'll discover that there's this entire whole area underneath the capital city region. And there's quite a few places in this area. And you want to go towards the catacombs. So you have to make your way down these sewers and there's quite a lot of fighting to get to the Grace location. When you get to the Grace location you've got to head out and then go left 
And then on the right hand side, there should be a ladder that goes down. And then you have to go across some pipes, drop down to where there's two giant lobsters and try to just run past them because they're a bit of a pain to try and fight. And then there's like this broken wall area. There's a wall that has a broken doorway in it and you go through there and there's this dungeon with ghost spectral soldiers and you'll find a boss called Eskar, this little goblin and he has two wolves, it's quite easy to take down and then you'll get the talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation which is quite a nice talisman that makes your attack power go up whenever there's bleeding going on which should be happening fairly often the main problem with this bleeding build is that there are some enemies in the game that are very resilient towards physical damage and some enemies don't even bleed. You can keep attacking them and they'll never do the blood loss effect thing. For example, those bosses at the end of mining dungeons that are made out of rock, they won't take a lot of damage from bleeding kind of builds or physical attacks. Also these crystal shiny things in the Haddock Tree area, they're very strong against physical attacks and bleeding. But I was able to take them down with enough attacks and the bleed thing eventually triggered. So it's not completely impossible, but maybe a magic attack build would be more effective against these kind of enemies. If you come up against a boss that is really strong against your current build, then there's no point struggling. You might as well just change your build to something else. The other annoying thing is it takes quite a lot of time to to get the set Puku buff on both swords. And during this time, you can be quite vulnerable against bosses. Especially if you summon the Mimic and you lose a load of health from the Mimic summon and then you lose more health from doing Seppuku and then you don't really have a chance to heal back up before the boss starts attacking you. But when you get all the buffs on and you're ready to go you can do some crazy amounts of damage for example on the Fire Giant. The amount of damage I was doing to his foot was just crazy. He didn't even last more than... A minute maybe. Plus my Mimic summon was also doing crazy amounts of damage with his own blood attacks. So yeah the blood build, bleeding builds pretty good for multiple occasions in this game. Give it a try for yourself, see if it helps you in any way. I found that using bleed attacks really helped when I got stuck on a few certain bosses. If you have any suggestions or improvements to this bleed build feel free to leave a comment, it'll be interesting if there's better ways of doing this. But for now, that was my way of doing it. Thanks for watching, goodbye.